Hi friends, welcome back. It's Dr. Cherry. So last time we were together, we drew your favorite book. Now it could have been a cover, it could have been a scene from inside of your book, but I was really happy to see that one that you're reading and two that you could illustrate the cover or an idea from the book. All right, so this week we're moving on and we are going to draw a landscape. Now a landscape is a picture of the land. So a seascape would be a picture of the sea. So scape really means picture. So a landscape is a picture of the land. A seascape is a picture of the sea. So then a cityscape would be a picture of the city, right? So we're going to do a basic landscape. You can tweak it any way you want to, but I'm going to show you the basics. First, let me put on the screen the step-by-step. -step. So you could freeze frame that if you want to, but we'll be going over it together, okay? So the first thing we need to do on our landscape is to draw the horizon line. Now the horizon line is where the earth and the sky meet. I'm gonna scoot that over a little bit, there you go. The horizon line is where the earth and the sky meet. It doesn't have to be a straight line, it could be kind of a wavy line because the ground may not be flat where you're drawing your landscape. That's the horizon line. If you ever look outside, the sky is not just a blue strip across the top. The blue, or whatever color the sky is that day, comes all the way down till it meets the ground or the grass. So that's what this line is. It's the horizon line. After you draw the horizon line, let's just draw another line to give the land some depth so it doesn't look so flat. I guess if you're drawing a farm, you might want to keep it flat. But we're going to draw a second line and keep it interesting. So you got, you got those two lines? Yeah? All right, so we're going to move on. For this landscape, I'm going to add a little house. Now remember, I'm always talking about simplifying your design, your idea, into shapes. So for the house, we need the roof. And what shape would the roof be? triangle and house itself square right we've got our little house out there somewhere we haven't figured out what kind of landscape this is going to be so for the next step I'm going to add some trees now you can draw trees any way you like to everybody has a, the style for making their trees when I draw winter trees I just draw sticks because all the leaves have fallen off, right? But I'm gonna make this a spring picture. So I'm gonna have a nice thick tree. Remember zigzag lines from first grade? There they are. And then I'm gonna add a big full tree around it. I'm gonna balance this out so not everything is on one side. And I'm gonna add a couple more trees over here. Zigzag lines poofy wavy lines. Alright, so we've got our trees in the background. Now the background is the furthest away from you and in landscape drawings the background is closer to the top of the page. So if the background is at the top of the page, the part that you would see closer would be at the bottom of the page. This is the foreground. This is the background. What do you think this piece in the middle is called? Background is in the back, foreground's in the front, and in the middle would be the middle ground. Right, so we've worked on the background. We're gonna work on the foreground. Now for my picture, I think I'm gonna add like a garden, just like in my sample. So when I draw flowers, I like to start with the circle for the center. And then you just do wavy lines around it. Another way to draw a flower is start with a circle and then draw loops and keep going until you finish all of your loops. Of course, you can always do two lips, which is like a U with zigzags on the top. And there's a flower, I think it's called a daisy. 
where it's kind of round in the middle and the petals come out. So I'm going to fill this space with lots of flowers. Imagine you're walking up to a house that has a great garden in the front. Now where there are gardens, there are bound to be other things, true? You might see some birds flying by. Maybe there's a snake down here. You have to figure that one out for yourself. So I'm going to add some stems, some leaves, maybe some grass, maybe there's a snake in your garden. Some snakes are really good for your garden, so if you see one, leave it alone. Definitely tell a grown-up. Okay. This one maybe is crawling on a rock, crawling between rocks. So I'm going to fill this space up with lots of flowers. Okay. Now the last thing to deal with is the middle ground. So the middle ground, I'm going to make a path to the house. So I'm going to draw lines from that door to where the garden is. And the last step, as always, is your details. I'm going to make it a sunny day with a couple clouds. Let's see what else can we add. A few weeks ago we learned how to draw ladybugs, so maybe you can put a ladybug in there, a spider, a slug, perfect spot for a slug. When we drew our house we talked about windows and shutters and fan lights. these so you already know how to draw your house for my path in the middle ground I'm going to make it out of bricks and maybe put a few bushes along the way now the closer it gets to you the bigger it gets so the things in the background will be tiny because they're far away Things in the foreground will look bigger because they're closer to you. Okay? And things in the middle will be somewhere in the middle. So you're going to draw first with pencil, erase it with an eraser. I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Thank you for reminding me. Draw with a pencil, trace it with a sharpie, then erase it, then add color. Oops, I'm going to show you my step by step again. So you can see it. So we're going to start with the uh, horizon line. Add a second wavy line to give it some dimension. Add a structure, it could be a house, anything you want. And then went and added some trees in the background. The background is in the back and closer to the top of the page. I added some flowers in the foreground. Good way to remember the foreground is it's right before you, right in front of you. So those things would be bigger. And then I added the rest of my details, the sun and the brick walkway in the middle ground. So that's a landscape. Now, if you wanted to do another kind of landscape, you can. Now we talked about different landscapes. There's a landscape, which is a picture of the land, and a seascape would be a picture of the sea. Right. So for a seascape, you're going to start with the same horizon line, but I'm going to make this one wavy. So in the background, I've got some waves. Maybe some big waves towards the foreground. I'm going to put a boat in the middle of those waves. Maybe it's a nice sailboat. Right. Maybe in the background there's an island with a palm tree on it. Gosh, wouldn't you love to go to the beach right now? Me too. So I'm going to put a palm tree in the background. So that makes the boat in the middle ground now. I'm going to make it nighttime. 
so the moon can shine on my water scene. Maybe there's a shark in the water. That makes it a little scary, doesn't it? Now, a few weeks ago, when we were doing our under the sea creatures, you learned how to draw a shark. So you could certainly add a shark to this picture. Okay. So if we did a seascape, we start the same way. How about a cityscape? A cityscape would be a picture of the city. So again, we start with the horizon line where the sky and the ground meet, but instead of drawing water or grass, if it's a cityscape, we have a lot of buildings, right? And so the basic shape for buildings are usually rectangular. Maybe you have one in the background that has a pointy top. Maybe one is small. You gotta get into the building, so make sure you include your doors. I don't know what kind of doors you want to include. And lots of windows. Okay. Maybe there's a sidewalk here. Perhaps there's a garden across the street. So you know those flowers we learned to draw? You could add them there. Sunny day. So you've got your choice. So even though I said a landscape, there are different kinds of landscape. Landscape is like the umbrella term for pictures of land and sea and city. So you do cityscape, a landscape, a seascape, up to you. Now this is the part where I would say, does anybody have any questions? But I can't hear you. So I hope that you review the video. If you have any questions, go back and see if you can answer them in the video. And if not, you can always send me a dojo message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So I can't wait to see your landscape drawings. Maybe you could draw a picture of a place that you've been. That would be really cool place that I've never been, I would love to see it. Maybe a place that you dream about going. This is a good time to do some daydreaming and sketch in your art book the places you want to go. All right, friends, I will see you next time. I miss you. I can't wait to give you high fives and elbow bumps or whatever we're allowed to do when we get back together. Talk to you soon.